on the day Colchester had fully deserved their victory. But Plymouth had saved some of their best football of the season for the second leg. And what tremendous support there was for the Pilgrims back at home park. 90 minutes from Wembley or 90 minutes from heartbreak. There's no replay, no second chance for Colchester and Plymouth. The verdict has to be delivered at the end of this one. The jury was out on Plymouth after they'd lost Sunday's first leg at Lair Road 1-0. They went into the playoffs as favourites for promotion, but played without conviction until manager Neil Warnock changed things around in the second half. And Ronnie Mojay did enough when he came on as substitute to get a chance from the start here. Mojay has had problems with a foot injury, but he's quick and gets forward from midfield, so his presence might make some of the burden off the two up front, Adrian Littlejohn and Michael Evans. Mark Kinsella's spectacular goal just before half-time was enough to settle the first leg, and Colchester manager Steve Wignall has decided not to tamper with a successful winning side. Top scorer Tony Adcock, the only survivor from their last appearance in a playoff semi-final nine years ago, is available again after suspension, but starts as a substitute alongside Steve Whitten and Adam Locke. Chris Fry coming forward for Colchester here, and he's already around Heathcote. Richard Logan, who's together at the middle of the Plymouth defence with Mick Heathcote. Chris Curran acting as a sweeper. This is better from Plymouth. And they've got a goal. Michael Evans. Two minutes and 45 seconds on the watch. And Plymouth back in this game. Hesitancy there in the Colchester defence. The ball bubbled kindly for Evans, and he made absolutely sure. Colchester claimed then that Evans was offside, but the flag stayed down, and Evans took full advantage. Robbie Reynolds from John Kirby. Forward by Curran, and that was inches past the post. Gus Caesar catching his goalkeeper Carl Emerson out then, but again the wind could well have played his part. Fortunately for Colchester, it's the right side of the post. But more defending to do here. Again, there was an opportunity for Plymouth. There was Mojay coming in. Ronnie Mojay brought into to the side for his ability to get forward. McCarthy with the throw. Reynolds has come out wide. Fry again forward. Reynolds again. Kinsella forward. And if it goes, that would have been a Colchester corner. They'll have to settle for the throw. Williams back quickly. McCarthy with the throw. Launch long. Caesar's forward. Away by Barla. Back again to Caesar. That wasn't too far away. Just Caesar didn't quite catch it right, but Steve Cherry was arching back to get there. In fact, he did well to keep it down. Once again, searches out Gibbs. Dennis coming through the middle. Here's Reynolds. Cut out this time by Ledbetter, who was caught by Kinsella, but he's managed to get Barlow free. Evans and Little John both in the middle. Still with Barlow. He had a sight of goal and he decided to take that route. Much to the dismay of Michael Evans and Adrian Littlejohn, who'd raced forward to offer some help in the middle. 
but he took on Corley and that wasn't too far away Evans has found Barlow again Barlow away on another of these mazy runs Header away by McCarthy Little John was in there and there's another booking and this time several players squaring up to each other Tony Dennis is involved Paul Gibbs there Ledbetter might try one left footed it's Ledbetter and that's number two what could I do Barlow shaped to take it and in the end it was the left footed shot which beat him Cook up there with Heathcote. Ledbetter. Ball to get Barlow in around the back. Corley away there from Little John. Barlow again. They have to close him down now, Colchester. But they didn't, and he got the shot in. Martin Barlow showed electrifying pace in the first half. And he was prepared to take defenders on then. Corley stepped aside forward by Locke McLeish up good jump by McLeish nearly found Adcock Ledbetter eventually got that ball clear for Plymouth Evans and Corley together and Evans nearly doing enough to get Little John in Strong running again by Adam Locke. Dispossessed by Williams. Now Ledbetter. That's a great ball again by Ledbetter. Barlow once more to stretch out. And he was brought down then by Simon Betts. Barlow furious. He felt that that was a penalty. Simon Betts was backpedalling then, but it was outside the box. Simon Betts will be booked. But once more, Barlow was racing away from him. It's a yellow card for Simon Betts. John Kirby satisfied that it wasn't a straight attack on goal. If it was, Betts would have been in real trouble. Ledbetter scored from a free kick in a similar position at the end of the first half. Two men this time in Emerson's wall. And this time, he was just the wrong side of the post, Chris Ledbetter. Straight through the wall. By McCarthy. He's cut there with McLeish. Good ball by Ledbetter. Little John is in on goal. Now, what is going through John Kirby's mind? That was a clear run on goal. And this could be a red card. No doubt about it. Little John clean through. And he was dragged down then by McCarthy. Will he get away with the yellow card, or is it to be red? John Kirby's certainly dragging it out and taking his time. And Tony McCarthy escapes. But he was the last man, and the trailing leg just caught Little John.
Plymouth still furious about the decision. Neil Warnock, the manager, on his feet, incensed by the decision. He felt that Colchester should be reduced to 10 men by now. Barlow. This time it's across the face of goal. Well, Barlow and Ledbetter are both shaped to take that. It was Barlow in the end. There's a hold-up now because the linesman on the near side has called over John Kirby, the referee. Neil Warnock, the Plymouth manager, was absolutely furious with that decision. He felt that Tony McCarthy should have been sent off. And John Kirby having a word with the Plymouth manager. Warnock very upset and very angry. I wonder if Neil Warnock will now be sent off the bench. He has. The Plymouth manager has been dismissed from the bench. And he's going into the crowd. Extraordinary scenes. Neil Warnock took over after taking Huddersfield up into the first division. But Warnock, having been dismissed from the touchline, is now sitting in the crowd. Presumably he can still get messages through. I wonder how long it will be before the linesman or John Kirby, our referee, notices that Warnock is down there because there are a cluster of photographers in front of him. Another header by Evans. And another header just wide. Again, Colchester caught with a free kick, a lead better free kick. Evans very nearly getting Moje in at the far post. Difficult free kick to defend against. Hit long again by Emerson towards Adcock. Kinsella, he's done it again! Mark Kinsella! 65 minutes gone, and Colchester very much in this game. Same range as Sunday, same result. He scored a fabulous goal in the first leg against Plymouth on Sunday. And that's a second. And more importantly, with away goals counting double, it means that at the moment, it's 2-2 on aggregate, but 3-2, should it go to that away goals rule? Now we really have a game on our hands. Adcock tracking across the pitch to get to current. And then McCarthy was head and shoulders above Moje. And it was right on the edge of the penalty area. Carl Anderson will really have to be on his toes. He knows what to expect now. Ledbetter and Barlow both poised over the free kick. Little John is in the wall. It's got to stand firm. Different approach. Curran coming in at the far post. And again, Emerson angry with his defenders. Came in from nowhere then, Curran wasn't picked up. And a mighty sigh of relief behind that goal. forward again, Moje tries to find Little John a real tension in the air and it seems to be affecting Plymouth Argyle more than Colchester United 
Steve Wignall said before the playoff started that they should go out there and enjoy it. But there's an anxious moment here. Barlow. This time they've got it. It's Paul Williams. Six minutes from the end. And Paul Williams has made it 3-1. Good play again by Barlow. And a good header too by Williams who was storming in then. Barlow to take on Betts. Williams to get there ahead of Fry. Hoisted forward towards Witten. Here's Locke. Came away off Heathcote. Kinsella took a deflection. Ledbetter was across then. Kinsella quickly over to take the corner. First effort was away off Heathcote. And the second one away off Ledbetter. Pumped in towards Corley. Thundered in a second time there. Kinsella once more. Corley. Now Barlow. Barlow with a chance to ease the pressure on that Plymouth defence and to get Little John away. Still with Little John. Play on. It's Evans. Great stop there by Emerson. One end of the pitch to the other. It was a gamble which Colchester had to make. Little John twisting and turning. Evans there to support. But Emerson stood firm. Important seconds ticking away now for Colchester United. Forward by Williams. This time it will be a goal kick. It's got to be hit long, Carl Emerson. Witten up. Witten won the header. Barlow. Patterson to take the pressure off once more. But that's it. A goal just six minutes from the end by Paul Williams. Enough to take Plymouth Argyle through to Wembley for the first time in their history. Mayhem at home park, but the Wembley dream is over for Colchester United. Their one goal lead from the first leg wasn't enough. But they were never going to be the pushovers which many imagined them to be before the playoffs started. Steve Wignall's team did well to get this far. His players performed with credit, but the disappointment of missing out on Wembley will still be hard to bear. It's the Pilgrims who make the progress. Plymouth Argyle 3, Colchester United 1. That's 3-2 to Argyle on aggregate. Drama of the highest quality from start to finish. Argyle were on their way to Wembley, and what an exciting way to book their first trip to the famous Twin Towers. It was time to celebrate one of the great nights in the club's history, and the fans needed no encouragement. This was the moment they'd been waiting for. More than 14,500 fans had packed the Home Park Stadium, and no one wanted to miss the post-match party. The fans got their wish when Neil Warnock and his heroes joined in the celebrations. For a team that kicked off the season with six straight defeats, these were unbelievable scenes. The pre-season promotion favourites had kept their dream alive, and no one could deny Neil Warnock's men deserved their victory. Not only were the Pilgrims still on course to bounce back to the second division at the first attempt, now they had the chance to go back in style, down Wembley Way.
playoffs are not everyone's favourite part of the season, but he can't beat the sudden death recipe for excitement. There's nothing quite like the emotion of winning. I don't have to say anything, do I? Really? I'm, I'm ever so proud of everybody. Supporters, they're a few a bit, a bit emotional. Uh, but what can I say about them? They've died for the club. The supporters have been brilliant and we've got a great chance of going up. We've had every emotion tonight. The highs, those opening goals, the lows with the incident with the referee and then just a few minutes from time. Well, when have we done anything easier this season? Listen at that. Take a few shots at that. Super nice. For most of the Argyle squad, this was a new experience. Winning a place in a Wembley Cup final is every player's dream. And when you know you've done it, there's only one way to celebrate. Quick word with Mickey Evans, who got that uh, vital Argyle goal after just a few minutes. Great strike, Mickey. Oh, I can't remember much about that at the moment. It's just uh, the highlight excitement at the moment. We did absolutely superb tonight. The lads battled. Thanks, lads. Great chill. It's just what the doctor ordered, that early goal, oh, wouldn't it? Definitely. Because uh, had a bit of jitters before the first couple of minutes. You get the early goal, we're right back in it again. I thought once we got the first goal, we could go on again and dominate the game. I think we did that. What did you think when they got their uh, the goal to make it 2-1? I popped my hand. I just fell on the floor at the moment. And, uh, but I thought we always in with a chance because they were looking dodgy at the back. The last 20 minutes because we went to uh, flat back four and with that deep space and that's what we can get behind and score another goal. Looking forward to Wembley now? Oh, they sat it, yeah, because I'm uh, brilliant. Well done, mate.